Um, here's what I've been thinking lately. Um, I did read your piece and I, I learned from it. Um, and, and the psychological dimension, this dimension of how you interpret the opportunities that are at hand, you know, I mean, the, this identity dimension to the problem, a kind of self-imposed limitations, uh, a kind of, uh, you know, ta Coates preaches the same kind of thing, doesn't he? And his outlook that the white, the American dream is a hoax. It's a, it's an empty uh, shell, you know, uh, Nicole Hannah Jones preaches this too, doesn't she? And the, uh, I'm sorry if I can continue in this vein, I'll become political and I don't want to, I don't want to be political. I want to talk about these communities and these people. But what I've been saying lately is uh, if we don't focus on the developmental imperative of enhancing the capacities of disadvantaged people of color, or if I can get away from that trendy uh, language, get poor black people in the ghettos of this country, if we don't concentrate on developing their capacities to work, to be productive citizens, to uh, comport themselves in a way that are not a threat to their neighbors, uh, to fulfill their human potential, to have the kind of, you're not for college degrees, but cognitive function beyond a basic level is surely a desirable thing, to acquire skills, to be settled in their lives, to stabilize their home environment, provide a stable environment for their children to raise, be raised. If we don't focus on the developmental imperative, we're never going to solve the racial inequality problem. It's not a problem of something abstract called white supremacy or systemic racism. It's a problem etched in the lives of many hundreds of thousands of people of a failure to develop their human potential. Uh, we have to be realistic about the fact that that potential has not been developed, uh, that, that people are failing to realize their full uh, human possibilities. Uh, and we have to be aggressive at addressing ourselves directly to the institutions, uh, the sites, the social locations where that development takes place. Okay, I've spoken long enough in that vein. That sounds at least vaguely consonant with your own view, Robert. Yes, it is. And... And one of the things that is very troubling is that to get at understanding though, how to change dynamics uh, is off limits. In particular, the black family formation and its impact, uh, the school system in ways uh, that we can learn from charter schools and why they're consistently, almost universally, have provided a, an environment in which success can take place compared to the public schools, that to talk about these things is pretty much off limits in uh, now, be, the be more explicit about what you're talking about. What things can't be talked about? How do charter schools deal with them more effectively than public schools? Well, I think that it's the issue of the family. Uh, charter schools have found a way to engage the family to get them to be the kinds of parents that they ideally want to be. Not that they found a way to locate the parents who already are what they no, want to be I and they've cherry picked them? No, no, they haven't. Okay. In a sense. But I give the example of people deciding they want to do exercise to improve their health. They're well meaning, but often, unless they have a coach, unless they go to a gym, where somebody is coaching them, yeah. don't fulfill their goal. This gets in the way, that gets in the way. Yeah. And I think that's true about a lot of these single parents, particularly single mothers, is they, they genuinely have constructive ideals for their kids' education and how that can be, how they can help. But they got complicated lives. They don't, you know, they need a coach. Yeah. They need somebody who prods them. And that's what the charter schools do. 
So maybe they take parents who have a little bit more of an inclination to want that. Sure. They do it. It isn't like they just have parents who will, you know, who are tiger moms. Yeah. They, they have parents who have aspirations and the charters help them fulfill those aspirations. And the problem is the public schools can't do that because that's paternalism. That's, that's telling parents, this is what you should do. This is what, and you know, how dare the government tell, you know, it's, it's the school's responsibility to do what they do and not get into our lives. So, I mean, I think that is a real difference. Let me just make an observation. And I wonder how you, I, I want you to go on. I, I, I really do okay. because uh, what to do about the development problem is the issue. But I just wanted to pause for a historical moment because I know in, in your intellectual ambition, you have written about a lot of different things, you know, about social life amongst immigrant groups going back to the early part of the 20th century and all <laughs> like that. It wasn't always so, was it? that public institutions felt restrained from being able to tell people how to live and show them how to live. It wasn't like that in the tenements on the Lower East Side and all of that coming up in New York City in the 1930s and well, the 1940s. Well, there was the Americanization process. Well, yeah. John Dewey was about. Which, it, which was paternalistic. Yeah, and it had some bad aspects to it. Oh, okay, okay, okay. You know, so, uh, you know, what... Uh, you know, white, what white elite want is not necessarily always fully what should be done. But I'm simply saying charter schools have found a way to be effective in this regard. So it's not simply that they so-called cherry pick the parents. Obviously, they get parents who are more receptive to something like this. Bob, I just want to say, I'm saying... Work hard, keep your nose clean, take care of your kids, get your homework done, value excellence, keep your nose to the grindstone. Those are not white. That's not anything white coming over anybody. That's just the formula for being successful in America, which People formula think. many people, <laughs> most of them have in, our intellectuals with the initials behind their name, would say it's an imposition of white society on on blacks, but in fact, it's the recipe for getting out of the fix that they're in. It certainly works for Nigerian immigrants and uh, many others, but I also think that you have, they have to get into the family earlier, that it ends up, while you don't have as much teen employment as you had a decade or two ago, you still have a large share of black women having their first child before they're 25. And, and many of them have low levels of education and they don't come from, you know, a two parent family. So what do you want to do besides coach them? I mean, one of the things you were saying with respect to the kids and education as the charter schools, they could coach. What, what do you want to send nurses home from the, with the, from the hospital with the baby? Do you want right, universal they have these visiting nursing programs? that go up to three years old, where they are incredibly effective at helping these young women to do what's not only good for their kids, but indirectly for themselves. I, and, uh, you know, Maya de Blasio before this pandemic was going to broadly expand visiting nursing programs that have primarily done now by a lot of nonprofits. Uh, but those are the things that are going to be helpful where you get into the family. It isn't, it's uh, pre-K, universal pre-K is the exact opposite. It says we can be substitutes for the family. We can take care of this okay. educational, that, and so yeah. not bad. G give us the kid. Give us a kid for six hours a day. We'll fix it. That's right. That, and we won't get into the family. Yeah. So, I mean, again, there's a downside. There are risks. There's paternalism. 
But that's the kind of effective programming that will, and, you know, these mothers, by and large, they are uh, very positive. They're getting services. They're getting information. They're getting networks. We are told if you have this problem, you go to this group, you go here. They they aren't saying, how dare you come into my house? How dare you? You know, it is being effective. And uh, there should be more of it uh, that can be done. And, you know, they could be done for five and six and seven-year-olds. There are equivalent kinds of programs. In Baltimore, there's something called the THREAD program that does tutoring. and But again, comes into the house and uh, engages the parent or parents in the process. So, um, and, you know, I think fatherhood programs and uh, interpersonal programs can also be effective in creating a, a healthier and more stable environment for kids.